All right, Liz. Uh, do we have any announcements today? Um, this is Janet Bush. We've got, um, I just sent out the notice, uh, the sign up genius for um, the facets feeding um, on the last Thursday of the month, the 25th. So Nina is going to forward that on tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also in the bulletin, I think there's a list of uh, donations that ECHO is requesting for the month of June. Um, so please look through that. Um, also, congratulations to all of our uh, 2020 graduates from college and high school. Um, and, and our apologies uh, that we can't get together to celebrate. <clears throat> I would also like to give everyone a, a quick rundown of our um, a quick rundown of our efficient schedule for the next uh, several weeks. Um, obviously today we are uh, pleased to welcome Meredith Harry officiating over our services. Um, the next two weeks we should have Father David Crosby. Um, June 28th uh, morning prayer with Richard Sellers followed by two weeks with uh, Mother Elizabeth Keeler, and a return of Meredith, followed by Trish Taylor, and that takes us to the end of July. Uh, what we're trying to do uh, as the worship committee is, um, one, you see we're back in the worship space today, which is great, um, but that is in preparation for a return to Eucharistic services when we do have priests, and when we don't, if anyone um, in the congregation has experience providing morning prayer, as we all know, um, any lay person uh, can provide that service. So I'm not sure how long it'll take for the new priest to arrive, but um, if you have interest in increased participation, please let us know. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Meredith Perry. Hey, Bob, I'm sorry to break in, but I got one uh quick nugget from the ground side of things. Uh, the, uh, so the announcement in the bulletin says the, the Coalition of the Willing uh, got together this past week to put, start putting together designs and ideas for the sign and that we would have another meeting this week uh, to, to keep on furthering that process. Uh, looking at the schedule, I think we're going to do Thursday this evening, or I mean this week, Thursday evening, 7 o'clock. So if you are willing and uh, if, if you have ideas and inputs to refurbishing the church sign, please uh, shoot me an email. My email address is in the bulletin. Uh, in case you didn't notice, we, we had a, a tree branch come down and, and take a big, uh, big dent out of the top part of the sign this weekend. So we are definitely uh, accelerating those efforts in earnest to, to put a refurbishment sign plan together. All, right, all inputs welcome. Uh, the other one from the ground side is uh, Bill Price and Memorial Garden Committee have been hard at work putting everything in place, and I think all of the stars have aligned, and Bill is meeting tomorrow with our contractor uh, to initiate phase two of the, uh, of the Memorial Garden project. Uh, that will involve all of the stone paving and, and establishment of the, the more elaborate pieces of the, of the Memorial Garden project. So. All good news there, and uh, thank you very much to him and the entire Memorial Garden Committee for all their efforts. Over. Outstanding. Thank you, Logan. And are we ready for our opening hymn? Uh, I'll say a quick intro. Um, good morning. Welcome. I do want to uh, Put your mind at ease that Nina and I are here and we are practicing social distancing. We do have masks. I'm going to take mine off at this point so that I can be clear. Um, we will start with our opening hymn. It's hymn 362, and we will sing all verses. Hymn 362.
is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim, and our mouths your, shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to Son, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. You're good. Try it again. You got it. <laughs> We're having a technical difficulty. It's okay. We'll say it again. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. 
We will say it together and I remind everyone to stay on mute. Nina will give the responses out loud for us. Um, at this time, we will say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Let us read together Psalm 8 as printed in our online bulletin. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn, adorn him with glory and honor. You give him majesty over the works of your hands, and you put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the path of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, 
and it was so. The earth bro brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every of kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And God, and it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning. The sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks. And we will now say together Canticle 20, Gloria and Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. 
We worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we will sing hymn 389. And I'm told that we are singing verses 1 and 2. Him 389. the Gospel of Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always. To the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning on this Trinity Sunday. Today we honor our Trinitarian God. The concept of the Trinity is one which scholars have spent lifetimes contemplating. Christians are monotheists. Mono 
means one, and theos meaning God. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To someone on the outside, you can see where this could lead to some confusion. We proclaim that we believe in one God, and yet we list that God into three parts. And in fact, if you Google or Wikipedia polytheism, Christianity is listed because it is seemingly above reason that we are to worship one God in three forms. And it was said that when St. Patrick tried to explain the Trinity in Ireland, he picked up a three-leaf clover and used it to show that the three leaves of the clover are separate, but together form the one clover. I have here with me this morning a kiwi, and I'm going to come over to the camera and show you a close-up, and I understand that we may be having some technical difficulties. So I'm going to give us a pause while we figure this out. I'm going to put my mask on and come on over and show off my kiwi real quick. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Is it showing up? Yeah, it's showing up. But they said our screen is black. We're only one person. Okay. Okay, well, I hope you guys can see me. But here I have a kiwi. Right, and this analogy is a little bit more for the children. I have some other analogies that might be a little more of an adult comprehension. But I wanted to use this as an analogy whoop, to show, and I'll back back up, but everyone can see the kiwi, and I'll go back to the pulpit now. And I hope you guys can see me. But a kiwi has three essential elements to it. It has the skin, it has the meat or the flesh, and then it has seeds. And without the skin, the kiwi is, isn't protected. It's not able to grow and ripen. And without the seeds, more kiwi won't grow and multiply. And without the flesh, there is no fruit for us to eat. And each part is dependent on the other two to be existing. And well, the kiwi is like our holy trinity. The skin is like the father protecting us. And the kiwi's skin is even soft and fuzzy. And God is there to comfort us when we need comfort and support like a fuzzy blanket. And the flesh of the kiwi, the fruit that we eat, is like the sun. And we know that God the Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh to be with us here on earth and to sacrifice his own flesh for our sins. And in turn, he taught us through the Last Supper remember him in the Eucharist that we share. And finally, the seeds, the tiny seeds of the kiwi are like the Holy Spirit. Seeds, no matter their size, serve to grow. And the Holy Spirit grows in each of us as we live out our Christianity. So next time that you're eating a kiwi or an apple or an orange, remember that we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm going to save that kiwi for later. And I'm going to offer you another way of thinking about the Holy Trinity. By looking at the Christian theology of marriage. A common gospel reading, and the one that we read at my wedding a few weeks ago, is from Mark 10, chapter six, or verses 6 through 9. I'll read that for you now. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. This concept of two people being joined so deeply that they are in fact one person is much like the concept of the Trinity. And it goes past just two people, but it applies to a whole family units as well. While each individual member of a family is in fact their own person, they are united by the bonds of family and tied to one another and are one. And I offer you a final analogy that I want us to contemplate 
especially as we look at the pain of our nation this week. The Trinity is like the members of a nation. We are all members of one nation under God. And within our membership as Americans, we have people of every race, every ethnicity, every gender, every sexuality, every political party, every religion. But through these differences, we are tied by our bonds of nationality. And whether a person is deeply passionate and patriotic about being an American or if being an American is simply their current location, they are all the same American. While each part of the Trinity performs different functions and while there are many gifts of the Spirit but one God, so too does each American have something important to offer. Our first reading today was from Genesis. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Every human being, every American is made in God's image. And that creation grants and requires that every human being be given the respect due to God. Now, I want you to be careful in this contemplation. What does it mean to respect another? Does it mean that you have to agree with them? Or that if they disagree with you, that they are any less worthy of love? Absolutely not. It means that they deserve love, that they deserve life, that they are precious children of God. Our nation is divided. There is hate pulling us apart. But we are called as Christians to unite in the teachings of Jesus Christ. In our gospel, Jesus stands with the 11 and he says to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with, I am with you always to the end of the age. This commission is no less important today. We are to go out and make disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And discipleship must come from a place of love. Loving one another does not mean complacency, but it also does not mean violence or destruction. We as Christians are to find the better way to love one another and to love fiercely. We are to love people on both sides. We are to love our black neighbors who are fighting for justice. And also, we are to love our police and law enforcement neighbors who seek to serve the community justly. We are to love our neighbor who votes differently than us, to love our neighbor who worships differently than us, and to love our neighbor who handles a pandemic differently than us. There are no caveats to this. We are just called to love without judgment. Even as Jesus hung dying on the cross, he forgave. He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. That is the example of love that we are given. The Holy Trinity protects us, loves us, sacrifices for us, and nourishes us as we try our hardest to live out our lives in, judge, in love restrained by judgment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go out and love your neighbors. Amen.
And we will now say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, Any progress. the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. No. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Lord, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Not the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your, in your, see you in your one and eternal glory. O oh, Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any ad adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. 
Amen. The prayers of the people are form four. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We especially pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, Jennifer, and Taylor, our bishops, for Meredith, our morning prayer officiant, for Joe, our music minister, for our vestry, for Liz Dilemma, our nursery attendant, and for Ruth, our pastoral assistant this week, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. I ask your prayers for Donald, our president, and Ralph, our governor, and all the leaders of our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit and give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, remembering the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. I ask your prayers for Jeff and Katie, for Ellen, Maureen, Addie, Bob, Beth, Nick, Jessica, Eleanor, Beverly, Joan, Beatrice, Gladys, Shelley, Stephen, Al, Betty, Tom, Bill, Virginia, Ruth, Elaine, Marion, Ginny and Fred, Marguerite, Ralph, Jim, Priscilla, Virginia, Ted, Elaine, John, LB, and all those working on the front lines during this pandemic. And I would now like to invite you to add your own petitions on the Zoom chat, which I can also read out. So we have prayer requests. For Woody and Beverly Baker, Oh, sorry, my screen just popped. Uh, Woody and Beverly Baker, whose daughter Margot was tragically killed this past week. They are friends of Danny Gorham and family. Please pray for Ken, Goldie, and Terry. Please pray for the soul of Dorothy Kearns, who went to meet her Lord yesterday. For Christina, Mark, and Ruth Lawson, welcoming our grandson Henry Connor Lawson to the world on June 4th. Please pray for Peter and Barbara Bumstead and Alicia Branson. Uh, please pray for my sister, Valerie, who's being treated for cancer, and for my brother, Eric, who is suffering from dementia. Uh, from, from the Branch family, uh, prayers for, her, for Kathy Branch's mother, Carol. Uh, from Chris Foster, uh, a request for prayers for the family of Dorothy Kearns. Uh, from the Kirk family, a request for uh, prayers for Camilla Hicks. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon. Camilla Hicks offers a prayer of thanksgiving to the 2020 graduates. So congratulations, everyone who's graduating. Uh, from Chris Foster, a prayer for all who are without work. Uh, from Megan Coffey, uh, for her sister Greta, who is battling cancer. And from uh, St. Christopher's in general, for Kathy, whose marriage is breaking up 
and Annabelle and her daughter. And finally from Ruth Irby, a request for prayers for Bill, Betty, Tim, Jonathan, David, Glenda, and V. Are there any other prayers uh, that you would like, uh, uh, any other requests for prayers to be said? Okay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Roger Collins, a former St. Christopher's member, uh, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I now invite you to join me in saying the search committee prayer, Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish. Likewise, guide the heart of our future priest that may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, finally, a prayer at graduation. May you have the wisdom in heart and mind Success in every challenge you find. Courage to seek life's purposes for you. Belief in yourself to make it come true. Strength to do your best and endure. And the guiding light of faith to ensure that whatever you do, whatever you do, God's love will always see you through. And we honor today Morgan Price, and I believe Jessica Manning has also graduated from UVA, and if that is incorrect, please do correct me in the chat with those prayers at graduation today. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. You are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And at this time, I offer anyone who has a birthday or an anniversary in the coming week to make yourselves known to me on the chat, uh, and we will say a prayer for that. And I do hope that you can see me now. We made an adjustment. And thank you for hanging with us as we troubleshoot our technology before next week's service and um, I will offer to refilm my sermon so we can have a video for the YouTube. I do have some pre-announced birthdays and I'm going to come over to the chat so I can see if there are any others. So I have Marion Evans' birthday was on June 2nd. The Bergs, uh, Ginny and Fred, are celebrating 67 years of marriage this week, and their son, Robin, has a birthday as well. Hearing and seeing no others, I will go ahead and say our birthday and anniversary prayer. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants. Marion, Jenny, Fred, and Robin, as they begin another year of life and marriage. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we will now say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, 
we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. And now a prayer of St. Christopher. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. And our closing hymn is from Wonder, Love, and Praise, hymn 778. And we will sing all verses.
will now have a postlude, which I believe is we will overcome.